dreams are are definitely for my kids. Um, I am a, I'm a, I'm a firm believer, not just in, in, in personal responsibility, but ultimate responsibility mm -hmm. in the sense that whatever happens to you, the only thing that matters is how you react. The fact that it happened is irrelevant because it's, it, it can happen to anyone as far as we know, um, whether there's a natural order or not, right? Um, you have no control over what happens to you. Um, my dream is always at this point going to be for my children because I have the ability to do whatever it is that I need to get done at this point, right? Um, if I want more money, then, you know, there's an avenue to, to get that. My previous dreams had been realized. So now that I know, I know how to do that, right? So this is no longer a dream. It's a, um, it's a matter of, you know, putting boots on the ground. It's a matter of doing it, not of, not of dreaming. So, you know, you know, when I hear my, my, my young ones and, and even my older ones, you know, talk about what they want to do, that's where the dreams go for me. You know, um, I think that phase of, <laughs> of, of life is more about realizing, you know, you know, what I can do versus, you know, what, what can I dream about and what I think about. So. And we're talking about our kids. My, my youngest boy, he loves animals, as y'all know. And this joker got to talking and he said, um, he said, you know, he said, what I want to do is go to school, have a farm, like fit, work at a farm while I'm at school. They get my own farm where people can come and see animals, but then I treat sick animals and perform surgery on them and get them healthy. And I was like, wow, that, that's some, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, because I've been thinking, I'm like, and, and, and when I think about that, so, so how do I react to that? Well, the first thing I think about how, what led him to that is our ability to feed into his dreams. That's where economic resources come in. We can take him to places to see exotic animals. We went to South Africa, he petting lions and walking elephants wow. at four. Wow. What, what pops in his head at 10 then? On your own darn safari. You just walk the elephant, young man. You know what I'm saying? And so then what happens? Well, he starts talking about farm animals and stuff. Well, my, my grandparents got land in Tennessee. This man, you know, we, when I grew up, we had all kind of farm animals, you know, just being, being Southern, really, right? And, um... But now we got some goats and Jeremiah got one of them. His name is Floppy. You know what I'm saying? His name is Floppy. And, and he had he had like he named Floppy. He got Floppy got big ears. And he had a, a lemonade uh, stand. Some of y'all came to. Jerry raised like $250. So now he got $250 worth of crackers for Floppy, right? But that's the entrepreneurial spirit where he's putting it together. So it's feeding into him. The economic resources allow us to feed into him. And that's part of the way I think about it. I, I, I agree. Like, man, you hit the nail on the head, both of y'all. When I think about dreams, dreams get, I love dreams, but they get harder yeah. for me. Mm -hmm. Like, they get harder because I don't control all of it. Yeah. I, 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 that worries me yeah. that I can't control what's going to happen to my boys, right? That I know that they're going to go from cute to criminal yeah. instantly in somebody's yeah. mind, yeah. right? The other thing that happened, and you spoke to a bill, I had all these dreams to do by the age of 40. I wanted to buy a house at by 25, I bought it at 24. I wanted to get my PhD by 30, I got it at 29. I wanted to be a full professor at 40, I did it at 39. Now I'm like, now what? Yeah. Like I feel like when people talk about midlife crisis, sometimes it's because you didn't do something. Sometimes it could be because you did something and you like, now what, right? All, right? Yeah, yeah, but, but one, one, of my, one of my boys, one of my partners who several of you all know, Dr. Lavelle Allen, who is the chief of emergency radiology at Vanderbilt, first black person to do that. We grew up together. Our parents was like your parents, like your parents, like in terms of like, like what, what I saw a family was. Right. And recently I was with him and he said, you know what, Ray? And it speaks to what you said, Keith, about how old we are. I think the first thing that happened, speaking of stats, right, black black men, we on average live to late 70s, early 80s. What if we could live to 100? Right. Like 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 like. So instead of us thinking that, OK, we can only live to 80. What if we could add 20 years to that? So what Lavelle was saying is, at this point in time, we only in the second quarter, baby. We in the second quarter. We ain't even made it at halftime. Like, like, think about what we've done and we're not even at halftime. Imagine if we 
treat it like that, if we start treating life like that, instead of treating it like we on the down slope, so that's what happened, right? You turn 40 and you be like, and partly it's because, I don't know about y'all, but I get out the bed and I'm like, I just woke up. My ankle should not be hurting from getting out of bed. Like I died in nothing. I'm going to pee limping, going to pee. I'm like, I don't understand, right? And then, you know, then you got the older people. Well, young fella, wait till you turn 60. No, I don't want to wait till I turn 60. I'm hurting now, right? So, so but, but, but the other part of it is also the time, right? So certain things slow down, certain things speed up. Our phys physicality, we just, we just slow down, right? Like it's just, it's just my, my old is that boy flying, right? And so I'm like, yeah, it's about a wrap for me. Like I've, I've had to, I might have one, two more good races in them. I'm going to pull a hamstring, but I'm going I'm to give it a go, right? But, but the point is, imagine if we view life that we're still in the second quarter. We're not even at halftime. How does it change? How does it change the ball game that we're not even at halftime? Halftime is where you regroup. You figure out what's next. If we treat it that way, maybe we wouldn't be so hard on ourselves now that we entered our 40s, right? Like that's a lesson for the 40 year olds, for the soon to be 40 year olds, for the recently 40 year olds, where we are so hard on ourselves. And as black people, we do it because we see like my uncle, who's 16 years older than me, pass away in his 40s, right? We see our relatives don't, who don't live well into their 60s, 70s, and 80s. We can change that. So part of the dream can be, at least for me, the way I think about it, isn't always professionally. It's happiness, it's being present, right? It's, 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 it's being healthy, peace. peace. Like, like can, can we create that oasis? And, and, and when we do that, maybe we transform what the third and fourth quarters look like. I didn't know what, I never, to be candid, I never envisioned myself to be an old man. And Ray helped talk me through that. He was like, Keith, to be honest with you, most of the stuff that you scratched off your list in a non-impoverished lifestyle or not a lifestyle in which you had just every just the common resources, those are just normal things that you would have already accomplished. That, like that's normal. Like for you to have a house and money in the bank and not have to worry, like that's all normal. It's like <laughs> You know, it's time to really, you know, tackle what your purpose is. You know what I mean? Understand, you know, you know, really find out, you know, what you're good at. You know, what people, we talked about advice and counsel and what people come to me for. You know, I'm to the point now where I understand my purpose now. So I've got nephews. You know, I don't have kids myself. Um, I plan to have some maybe in the future. But um, at the moment, you know, I've got, you know, Philly's kids, my, 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 my nieces. and I got nephews and nieces all over the place. You know, and, you know, I really, really speak life into them. I, I feel like I am, a, you know, a, a great uncle to them. And, and I'm just thinking about the next half of the life, everything that you just said just a moment ago. It's like, you know, I'm maybe I'm not, you know, maybe I can be an old man. You know what I mean? And, you know, what that looks like. And, you know, you know, once you get past the monetary stage, it's like, what am I doing here? I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to articulate that to everybody. It's, it, once you get past to the point where everything is on autopilot from a monetary standpoint, what are you doing? You know, and that's the part that um, iron sharpens iron. And that's some of the things that we're talking about. And, you know, hopefully we can continue to have conversations like this and learn from one another. No doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely yeah. think that, like, from, from a dream perspective, um, I always say keep dreaming. You know what I mean? Because if you know, if you if you keep dreaming, you you if you stop dreaming, you can't manifest a vision for yourself, mm -hmm. right? And so so I, I look at and it, you know it's probably not Webster's dictionary or anything, but I look at like dreams are like uh, people think they're things that oh you can't accomplish a dream, right? You're gonna go build a colony on Pluto, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Like okay, the people are dreaming, right? But what if you dream and then you turn that into a vision, Bingo. right? Because as soon as a dream becomes a vision, you start working towards that vision, right? You can set, set the goals. You can do those type of things. So I think uh, I'm, I'm always dreaming, um, you know, uh, about, about what, 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 what does life look like, mm -hmm. you know, for what do I want life to look like when I'm 80? Yeah. You know what I mean? What, 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 that's, that's my dream. My dream would be, X, Y, and Z, right? You know, and, you know, a lot of times I think people need to, dreaming is healthy 
Um, and, and you can cipher yourself if you don't dream, right? Because if you don't dream, then your visions are going to be small, right? You know, if you just go right for a vision, you know, five years from now, I want to make a million dollars, okay? Well, what if God had, if you would, if you, what if you have dreamed a hundred million dollars? Right. And God, that's what God wanted you to do. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So I, I feel like you have to dream so that you can start to see some, realize some visions mm -hmm. of yourself and what you want to do. And, you know, it could be dreams for our kids to be safe and so on and so forth. But if, if, if you can't dream, you stifle yourself mm -hmm. from realizing a vision of yourself. Because once you have a vision of yourself, you know, that manifests into um, affirmations of yourself on the daily, on the daily that you're going to take the small steps over a length of time, delayed gratification. A lot of think, think that that has a lot to do with people's success and things like that too, realizing your dreams or your visions. So that's what I would say. I'm, I'm, I'm always dreaming, you know, um, you know, of course, you know, you, you got to kind of, you know, put dreams in perspective as well. Um, but, um, but yeah, I, I think you got to dream. You got, you got to dream and you got to go after them. Absolutely. Yeah. Casey? Oh man, everybody doesn't have any soon. The great part about this conversation, this dialogue, is everybody has a different road that brought them to the basement. Yeah. Um, for me personally, when I dream for other people, for ball players, people you've helped get to a certain spot, now you dream for your kids. And no disrespect to nobody. The old shit, I don't claim it. At 43, I run faster than I did when I was 21. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I lift more than I did in my 25 year old. Absolutely. And I don't think about retirement. Yeah. So I had to turn the people you, that love you the most and you love the most, turn off what they grandmama told them yeah. and their granddaddy told them. Yeah. They, well, you should be. No, I'm not doing that. Yeah. So I had to basically, of course, out of love for my family, yeah. I had to mute them. Because you're not going to put generations of what we did to where I want to teach my kids. Mm -hmm. So one of my dreams is I got a nine-year-old and a seven-year-old. My daughter will be 18 and I will be 54. They're like, oh, man, 54. I'm like, man, 54? Yeah. I'm man. like, man, I'm going to be running her little ass down my yeah. son. I don't look at it like, yeah. kind of like Ray said, yeah. thank you. Yeah. And... You put the limitations on your life and your dreams when you start saying, oh, I feel this way. I should be where I should be talking about earlier. You said, man, my life, I should be here. It's like, man, I'm glad I am where I am at 43. Mm -hmm. All the failures and reading my personal right. stories, like, man, I am glad where I am because for my kids, when I'm 54 and 55, I'm going to keep getting better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't plan on slowing down. I don't plan mm -hmm. on saying, well, my mom, God love my mom, I love her death. Well, I'm 62. 62? You ain't 92? Yeah. The mentality of like the older you get, you gotta slow down. Yeah. You just gotta make better decisions. Yeah. Like, that's it. You don't make mistakes, you may made a choice and a decision. Yeah. Like Jay Prince said, every day you got a chance and you got a choice. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. So I wake up, I think, I'm gonna hit this gym, I'm gonna eat right, yeah. I'm gonna have me a drink or two, yes, sir. but I'm gonna take care of my kids, I'm gonna make sure I don't stop in my lane. Mm -hmm. Now look at that Ray, what he doing? Now looking at what's your purpose? Mm -hmm. And that's a dream for me that I look at, man, I'm gonna do this for my kids. And then when I turn 18 to 19 years old, I mean when they turn 18 to 19 years old, I'm gonna figure out, okay, now what's like look yeah. what look like for me. Cause y'all, y'all grown now, y'all make your own decisions. Yeah. So dreams could be big, and that's wrong with me. I got big dreams, but day to day, what does that look like for my health? What am I giving my kids, my energy, my time? That's the dream of mine, is just having that time and that energy to keep having this big 135-pound kid I got that's nine years old <laughs> jumping on my back. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's just the little things, like holding your daughter with her saying, like, oh, my back. No, man, that's it's just to not slow down to where I can't do what I want to do. Physically with my kids, mentally with my kids, mm -hmm. and use that as an excuse for, nah, I'm, 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 I'm 54. I'm, no, man, I'm, that's, that's a big dream of mine, just not to be, as you said, be present. You just talk about keep being present. The older we get, physically, mentally, just be present. Yeah, that's kind of mantra. Very good. Yeah. So, 
uh, my dream is 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 what what you talked about when you described yourself. My dream is for uh, when my son is in this basement with his peers that the majority is you. Yes. Um, yes. That uh, some of the trauma uh, that some of us may have suffered, some of the decisions that uh, we have made, you know, that's stuff that they're talking about, about their parents. Oh, yeah, that's stuff my dad and them went mm-hmm. through. That ain't, that's, that's yeah. you know, like color TV, you know, it's, it's standard, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Flash screens is standard. Um, and so, and so I, and I, when I dream about that, cause I look at my kids and, and by all means, like, you know, I had the single mom, yes. And, but my dad was there for me and was great. But I look at my kids, I'm envious of them. Mm. Um, cause I'm like, man, my son and my daughter get to see their daddy love their mama, yes, sir. Mm-hmm. get to say mama love their daddy. Yeah. Um, and so, and when I say envious, cause I like, like, Seriously, like I've never seen my dad flirt with my mom, right? Like, you know, they were divorced when I was like three, right? You know, and so, but all of those type of things, my dream is that when my children are that age, like, yeah, that's that's just old school stuff. Uh, and even if the families end up separating, right? Some people's families separate. The whole dad beat dad, all that stuff is gone. That's old school stuff. I feel like, like right now, particularly since uh, 2020, like we're in our, either we're in a renaissance or we're on the runway. Mm-hmm. But this um, we talked about, like everybody trying to be entrepreneurs and go do for themselves. If you look at social media, look at all of the like couples pages that are popular now, like marriage pages and positive things like a lot of positive things are cool now. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, and my dream is that like more like positive things are the cool the yes. end things yes. uh, and so i just try to live that uh with my children and my family and through honesty and through all of our challenges and, and everything so that they know that they can be open and they can talk and talk about their challenges and don't feel like they have to go somewhere else to to talk and so yeah this is good stuff before y'all get on this is good stuff man i love this man this is dope one, one of the things and this is more this is for this is for all this is for us this is for, i'm talking to each one of you guys now right um i'm just holding a microphone because you know but i'm I, i'm letting everybody's ease i'm talking to y'all this is important for me i'm the, I'm the new guy to the basement right and um, I want to give you guys permission to continue to keep dreaming and keep going hard though because i don't what i what i don't want to hear is like what I'm, I'm sorry, what I want to remind you of is there's the Marcuses in the room that get still get excited about the successes and the accomplishments that you guys have. That now are just like, okay, yeah, I'm accomplished. This. this is the thing. This is the thing. Like the amount of time and, and the amount of time that I spend trying to figure out and navigate who and what to model is is is, is significant. You know what I mean? Because it's really challenging to be what you can't see. You know what I mean? It is, it is. It's challenging to be you can't see. And as long as I have people that are my, I tell this all the time, you know what I mean? It's, I don't care if you hit those goals. Keep going. I need you to go for that next one. Because there are people that are still, like, I'm, I'm still climbing the gate, you know what I mean? And I still have massive, huge, crazy dreams, you know what I mean? I'm like, I want to hit this goal and I want to erase stigma for all of the people that are coming out of these sales and know that there's brilliance and you can do this thing. And I want to be able to build this incredible technology that allows for people to do massive data captures and elasticizing machine learning techniques to be. I have these massive dreams that I want to accomplish. You guys continue to inspire me. And, and and I don't want you to lose that. I don't want you to. Re- I don't want you to forget that. You know what I mean? Like that's important. I want you to continue to dream for your children. Yeah. But it's challenging to be what you can't see. You know what I mean? And when I look at models of success, like I remember when you first told me. You know what I mean about the when, about the gym about me about the court. When you first told me about the court at Bowie Gym. You know what I mean? For literally a week straight, I'm talking about the court like it was my court. You know what I mean? Real live. You know what I mean? And and, and all these people who were listening. You know what I mean? And and I make horrible, like, the, the, the mistakes that I make along the journey, the, 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 when you guys say y'all make mistakes too, it makes me feel a lot less alone. You know what I mean? To be like, Dad, I ain't the only one that tricked this thing up, you know what I mean, along this journey. You know what I mean? I'm not the only one. So I want to give you complete permission to continue to keep crushing it. 
because that's it. That's important for me. I need to see that. Like, please don't leave lose sight of them. Like, oh yeah, you know, I'm dreaming for the kids. I'm dreaming for everyone else. Now continue to keep dreaming for you because I'm still climbing a gate and I want to climb over it. And I need to see the people that's climbed over it and that are reaching for another gate for me to say, oh, there's another gate. Tell me more. So what did you do with this? I mean, I mean the conversations we had. You don't understand. Like, we talk about the con- I I, so I got to get flowers, right? I I do it all because I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful, man. I'm so, I feel so blessed. Like, I remember when we, when we first started talking about real estate investment trust. I remember I had a conversation like, yo, if you had a million, what you going to do today? And he was like, I'm like, yo, would you know what you're going to do? 30 seconds, you know what you're going to do? Like, if I gave you a million today, outside of the, the revenue you're capturing in your businesses, today's a million. What would you do? And one of the things he was like, I'm like, would you know? He was like, oh, yeah, I know. And I'm like, yeah, yo. And, and, and immediately I'm going right back into my investment accounts. I'm like, yo. Real estate investment trust. And since then, like now, I'm like, oh, I'm capturing this monthly dividend income. I'm like, my bro, yo. So it's so important, you know what I mean, to share that, you know what I mean, with, with because I, I need that, you know what I mean? So I want to give you full permission to live in your dopeness, you know what I mean? And you got, I'm great that you have the legacies and you're creating legacies, but when you hit those targets, what is next is giving it and sharing it with the next one because you're my next stage of social capital and I need that. So no, I definitely don't experience survivor's remorse. In my head, I'm like, yo, I got so much more I need to accomplish before I ever get to a point where I experience that. In my mind, I'm always mind blown that people aren't wanting to follow that because success leaves footprints. I'm like, yo, I see the footprints. I'm trudging down this way. I'm frustrated that you are not trudging behind me and I try to go reach back, go go back and go go reach and go go grab the people with me. So 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 in, in all for honestly like nah I don't feel survivors remorse. I think the one thing that um the one thing that it's interesting I was thinking about this today, right? I had a meeting today um it's so it's so this so it's so serendipitous. I love this. I had a meeting today with with what I would call a while ago a competitor, a competing company. And it's the first time I've ever met with another CEO of a competitive, a competitive company. And this company is doing really, really well. And in fact, they just raised another $20 million Series B round. And they just raised a bunch of money in their Series A round. I'm like, yo, what's... And I'm having this conversation. And it was interesting because what I was sharing with her as we were leaving that meeting is that I just grew up during the era when... Everybody was my adversary. Everybody was my competitor. Everybody, like the people who, the people from when I was selling blow pops on the school bus to when I graduated to start selling weed to when I started selling crack to when I started working at the chop shop to when I got to prison when I was selling sodas and black and miles in Newports. You know what I mean? Like everybody was a competitor and it was always crushed the competition. And never, ever, ever did I take the time to listen to the old heads that was trying to tell me that Scarface had just dropped a verse in um, one of his songs. He was talking about. When we were on the block, we all worked together and we all stacked stacks. And I was like, I, I didn't hear that back then. Now, in my new in this new journey, as I continue to grow and learn how to be a growing CEO, one of the things I'm learning is how to collaborate with others along the journey. And so, as I think about how to 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 impact and go back and go grab them youngers, it's not I'm frustrated from not running those the footsteps. I'm learning how to articulate the power behind collaboration and not competition. I'm like, yo, you ain't, we ain't even got to compete, bro. Like, we can go get this back together. Why should we, we should be thinking about this together. I wish I would have even been thoughtful about that when I was running my construction business. When I was running painting contracts, I'm like, young, like, the companies who are really winning and winning big bids on big, were the ones who were creating joint ventures to paint MGM, you know what I mean, grand. And I'm like, yo, this is a, a $400,000 painting contract that I won't even have access to because I'm not willing to walk inside of a room and think about what a collaboration can look like in order to be able to really scale my business. We can go a lot further when we collaborate. Yeah. Survivor's yeah. remorse. Yeah, um, I, I, I can speak very personally uh, to, this, uh, to this topic because uh, it, it has impacted me. Um, I dealt with it for, for me, a number of years. Um, I told you guys a little bit, you know, growing up in the projects. Yeah. What I didn't tell you guys is that for seven years, um, my two brothers and I were in foster care, and we lived in a housing project in this in this place called McDuffie Village. It was a it was literally a trap. It was one way in and one way out, you know. And and it was it was one of the most uh, dangerous areas in. I'm from this town called Lombard, North Carolina, um, and um, and so we were we were in a really really bad bad situation um, with the foster parent that we were living with. Uh, I had a younger brother and, and an older brother. And so we would, uh, you know, 
go, we, we had to walk to school and, you know, I mean, it was just, it was violence everywhere. It, it was, it was just a bad situation. Um, my two brothers, um, and you can expect that type of uh, situation to, to, to affect you in a negative manner. Uh, and it did, it, it infected, it affected all of us differently. Um, it really impacted my, my brother, my two brothers, um, m more so than me. Um, so as we grew up and, you know, I kind of, you know, made some different decisions than my brother. And in fact, I was just talking to uh, Marcus about two weeks ago about my brother, one of my brothers just got out of prison again uh, about three weeks ago. Um, but that's the way it impacted them. Um, you know, they, they turned to, uh, you know, I turned to education, they turned to, um, you know, some bad decisions in, in the streets and, and, and got in a lot of trouble along the way. So um, as I, you know, I made it through high school, went to college, um, you know, it was, it was really the jet pack that fueled and motivated me. I never wanted to, to see that life again. And so um, I worked my butt off. I worked my ass off every, you know, I, I, I mean, I put in the time. I mean, I, I, I lived in the library. Uh, you know, I, I, I just I was so afraid of uh, of going back to that life that I, I, I didn't have a plan. It wasn't a, I, I didn't have a plan B. Everybody's I was at all my family's plan B, but I didn't have a plan B. Right. Everybody could call them. So. Um, so when I did, I, you know, I made it through college, uh, did well, um, got out of college, got a, got a decent job. And I was, man, you talking about guilty. I, I, I felt, I felt like when, when it should have been some of the best times of my life, you know, celebrating, made out of college, you know, got several offers, took a job, you know, making more money than, you know, anyone that I'd ever known in my family, but I didn't have that, I didn't have that, that, um, that joy. I just, I, I, I knew my, 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 I had a younger sister too. Um, my sister was still living in the project. She had a couple kids, my brother in and out of jail. So anything they ever asked me for, um, man, I, I, I felt like I had to do it. I felt like it was uh, my my responsibility to to take care of, of all of them because I had made it and why did I make it when everyone else is still in that same situation um, and and I mean it it got to the point where if they needed something I would I would send them money before I would pay bills at sometimes because. I just felt like I, I shouldn't be, it felt like I shouldn't be here. You, you shouldn't be here. You should be exactly where they are or they should be, you know, where, where, where I am. Um, and I struggled with, with that up until it wasn't until I got, I really got married. And now I had my wife that I'm responsible for. Um, and, and having to sit back and sit down and have a talk with my brothers and sisters saying, Hey, listen, um, things have got to change, you know, uh, you know, I, I you know, uh, I love you guys, but I've been somewhat of a crutch for everyone. You know, everyone calls me and says, hey, trail, trail is what they call trail. You know, you know, my, my, my car, my car payment is late. My lights are getting ready to get cut off. I need and and before they finished the sentence, I was wiring money to Walmart or, you know, or, 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 or whatever. Um, and it wasn't until again I got married, um, responsible for my wife, and 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 moved here, that I said, "Listen, guys, I, you know, listen, I, I, we can't we can't keep going around this. This is a revolving door at this point. You know, um, I, I need you guys to now start making some some better decisions and um, not leaning on or or, or using." what we experienced, we experienced some bad shit. We, we did. I mean, it, but we can't, you can't let that continue to anchor you down and not, um, not start to, to build something of your, of your own in life. And I'll help you. I'll absolutely help you hundred percent bill, but I just can't just freely just give money just because you on a whim, you want to, you know, you know, decide not to, 
pay your pay your light bill this month because you want to you know buy you know buy something and and you know you got to start taking responsibility but survivor's remorse was I mean, it was tough it, it, it was tough because it's one of those situations where you tell somebody yes a hundred times yeah. that one time you say no mm -hmm. um the world's in it like yeah. you know i i mean they my my brothers and sisters they they the first time I told them no, they didn't speak to me for a while because it was such a shock. I, they were so used to me saying yes that the one time I said no, I, I mean, it, 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 it caused a, a huge rift that it took some time to build because when they got, when they got upset with me, I in turn said, are you serious? I, you know, I've said yes a hundred times. The one time I say no, you guys just, you don't want... That, that, are you using me? Are you are, are um, and now am I, you know, just your your punching bag, you know? Uh, yeah. So it, it, it absolutely um, it was absolutely uh, a transition that they had to um, to kind of go through. And 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 we, we worked ourselves. We worked it out and we worked ourselves back to each other as, as family does. But it was it was it was something that it was, I would say, one of the biggest struggles that I had to learn where I could not, I could not continue to feel that guilt and let it manifest into me, um, basically financing my, 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 my siblings lives and my siblings had kids, right? So I'm financing my siblings life and their kids lives, um, because I feel guilty that they didn't make it. Um, because of knowing what we went through, and I did. So um, that was that was absolutely something that uh, that I did, and that, that's a real real thing, it, you know. Um, but I, you know, again, it took some time and some uh, some prayer to to get through that. But um, I, I, I I did uh, finally after after some some life events happened, and especially uh, especially with my sister. Like my sister um, had three kids. Um, um, one of them's from a was from a really really bad dude and um and and he eventually died um the, her two oldest kids uh dad and my sister <clears throat> she worked hard she works hard she she she's someone that um that will go work and work overtime and you know and put in the the hours um but she was working all that and still didn't have enough for ends meet right so I got to a point where I was seeing her struggle so bad. I mean, so mightily. She still she lives in the Fayetteville, North Carolina area. Um, that I said, and 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 it all came to fruition when she um, she was she was she was about a week away from uh, her and the kids getting getting put out. Yeah, her length. She was a couple months behind in rent, and she didn't call me, and she didn't let me know. And in fact, my mom called me and told me. And and I was upset she didn't call me, but um, but I called her um, and then I called her her landlord. And then I said to myself, no one should be able to um, control whether my sister has somewhere to stay and kids. And I bought a house. I bought a, I bought a house in Fayetteville, I bought a house that was big enough for my my sister, her kids, my mom, her my brother, for all of them to live in. Knowing that that takes some burden off, that that takes some stress off of me. Mm -hmm. I know that no one can; they'll never be without somewhere to stay. Mm -hmm. And 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 I help, and you know, and I, and I bought this house, and you know, and they all live there. Uh, and so I, but I, I charge them a nominal amount of rent, you know, to make sure that they're they understand that you know nothing is free. Right. Um, but yeah, uh, so so yeah, so to your question, yeah, I I, I learned a, a balance. I'll still help uh, my brother. I, again, just got out of uh, just got out of prison, and and I'm, I'm helping him kind of get work himself back into uh, the world, uh, uh, and you know, get himself established. Um, got a you know, got got a job, kind of set up with someone that I know from down there. Um, uh, and just kind of helping him start to make it on his own. Um, but yeah, it, it was, it was, it, 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 it's a balance now. Like I, I, I still help when needed, but I don't, I just try not to overstep and try not to overdo it. 
what I'll say about that with regards to um, survivor's remorse, I have experienced that. When you come from extreme in, in, impoverishment all around you, and you get it the long way, like, you know what I mean? It's different than, you know, getting it fast money. It's a scene, you're down, you can bring all your people with you. But when you talk about long-term sustained success, a lot of times the people who you grew up with, while you're building, while you're off doing it, they don't understand how you got to that point. So, so in their mind, like for me, I mean, I, I love to dress like this, but I'm in seven days a week, I'm suited and booted. I'm in suits and, 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 and dress shoes every day. And the people that I grew up with think that I'm a pastor or something. <laughs> because in their mind, they don't, they, don't, they don't think business when they think suited and booted. They think a pastor or a pimp, you know, just to be candid with you. So, <laughs> so for me to, you know, so... I'm saying all that to say that, you know, I struggle with showing, you know, some of my success, not only just with, with friends, but also with, with, with some family as well, um, because there is some envy within yeah. the family. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a high level of expectation where they're expecting you to go above and beyond what they may know what's in your bank account to do for the family. Because in their mind, you got it. These wolf packs that we talked about and, you know, guys that we can come with and we can be vulnerable around, that we can discuss some of the things that we're going to, I think is very valuable and very important around dealing with stuff like that. Because, it, you know, because it, it's a reality and I can't say that I have the answer to how I've dealt with it. But, you know, it is an a ongoing thing. I mean, it, it, it's constantly changing, you know, it, it, because there's emotions in this. You know, when you're dealing with an, a disinterested third party, you know, you can say, yeah, no, and be done with it. But these are people that you love, your loved yeah, ones, yeah. people that you are going to interact with for the rest of your lives or their lives. So to be able to maneuver those relationships and bringing money into the situation, there is there is no there's no easy answer. There's no right. I mean, it is you know you you just do the best you can and 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 try not to. There are going to be hurt feelings involved. There there's going to be there's a potential for family fractures. Um, but you just listen. I I wish I had the answer. I have I had an answer that worked for for me and in my family's situation, but every family's situation is going to be a, a bit different, and um, and you're just gonna you're just gonna have to maneuver in you know and and what what your 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 best sense is. So look, fellas, we could do this. Look, fellas, we could do this forever. <laughs> we on two hours and forty minutes, <laughs> right? So look, as you all can see. We could do this for hours. Yeah. When we start talking about fellas only fellowship, this is what it's about. Yeah. It's about success. It's about wealth building strategy. It's about family. And it's about positive aspects of black manhood. That's what we're about in the basement. Since that's yeah. evidently that, that, that's what it's been called, <laughs> yes, which I love. So look, thanks for tuning in. Look, I got to do all the normal stuff. Yeah. So, so subscribe, yeah. like. You know what I'm saying? Send this video to someone, tune in, because you're going to be hearing more from these fellas and more. So thank you for tuning in to Fellas Only Fellowship.